Hey, what's up, everybody? Video 44 coming at you with another video. All right, it's like three in the morning, and Shams posted. I don't know when he posted this on uh, Instagram. I literally just saw it. A uh, Daryl Morey uh, was thrown completely under the bus by James Harden. I don't know where John, James Harden was at or the context, but the footage is there. He got up in front of a bunch of people, looked like uh, some type of setting where he was uh, gathering some type of press conference. Maybe it's some type of basketball uh, summertime thing. or I don't, I don't really know what it was. But he was standing in front of a bunch of people, cameras snapping everywhere. And he said, Daryl Morey is a liar and I will never be a part of any organization he's a part of. Scorched earth, man. Complete scorched earth. You talk about having this go as left as possible. It went as left as possible. I'm not really sure if this is not entertainment. I'm just going to tell the people what comes to mind first when I watch stuff like that since I'm a speculator, a fan, somebody that doesn't have any connections to anybody. I get this stuff just like everybody else does. And I'm telling you, after watching the NBA all of my life, sometimes I think the players are in cahoots with the organization, of the association, to promote the league during the summertime, and they will go scorched earth on something like this to keep us talking. I personally think, <clears throat> I personally think James Harden is doing his part. <laughs> I think James Harden is doing his part. I think James Harden is promoting the league. <laughs> I think James Harden is giving us something to talk about in the dog days of the summer. I really do. I don't think this is as much as the truth as it is WWE type stuff. I really do. Because at the end of the day, just two weeks ago, with all of these same situations in place, it was said that James Harden would be willing to return to camp. For Philly. Something broke down. Trade didn't go through. And now he's going scorched earth. Based on the tea leaves I've read. And when I say tea leaves, all the stuff that I gather in situations when I listen to the information. Now granted, they ain't been on point as of late. To be honest with you, if you guys have been following my channel, the dog days of summer have been just that for me. I didn't even know there was a basketball game yesterday. So I'm, I'm not exactly my, my best self. But based on what I'm reading, it, it should not be what's going on at all. Philly should be more than ready to move on from James Harden because they have a bigger priority in place, and that's Joel and B. <clears throat> okay, they don't have they can't do this with James, in my opinion. They did this with Ben, but to be honest with you, Ben was a bigger star at the time based on his age and what they were expecting of him at the time, the fact that they had drafted him and he had already been an all-star in their uniform. And there was a different story. That was a younger player. James is an older guy. James got promised some things that he probably should not have believed were coming his way based on what the perception of his game would have been anyway. So in other words, for example, somebody comes over to me, looks at one of my paintings, one of my art pieces and, af and offers me seven million dollars for it me little old me not me as a world-renowned famous artist just little old me seven million dollars for something i've done now i could believe that they're going to pay me seven million dollars for what i've signed i can agree to take that money and they can even choose to pay me that seven million dollars but make no mistake about it i don't believe that anything I've made should be sold for seven million dollars today. Now, if I somehow go on to be a great artist and, and you go back and look at some of my old pieces and suddenly after something has already sold for four or five million dollars, then you look at another one of my pieces and say, yo, that's an even better piece, let's sell it. And, and that is the price of what I have going, fine. But to just assume that something that's not necessarily righteous in terms of what I should be paid should be coming my way just because somebody told me that they would pay me that? You see where I'm going with that? James Harden should not be being promised to make max dollars at this stage in his career. 
So whoever promised him that sold him some smoke that he shouldn't have believed in the first place, and that is just as much his fault as anybody who told him that. James Harden, ain't nobody supposed to be paying you no more than $35 million this year, bro. They're not. Not based on what we've seen. Why? I'm going to tell you the truth, man. Because of this type of stuff. When you do this, as in I'm unhappy where I'm at and now I want to move on, and I'm going to tell everybody how unhappy I am, and I'm going to protest like somebody did something wrong to me, when you do that three times in your career, it d dilutes your value as a player because now I have to work into the account, into the price, you doing that. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Dane Lillard, never done this. So when he demands a trade, it's a different conversation because the likelihood of him staying where he's going next is high based on what we've seen and the tendencies of the player. He speaks to loyalty. The situation went left. He needs to leave. He demanded out. It's not the same game. It's not going to be treated the same. Even though Dame is having a hard time moving, nobody's going to refuse him an opportunity to get what he's deserving in this league based on his behavior being loyal. James Harden diluted that. He diluted that in Houston, demanding out of there. He diluted that in Brooklyn, demanding out of there. He's diluting it now in Philly. And because of it, Philly was not inclined to pay him what they were promising him. And he shouldn't have been buying that. And as in somebody told you that and you believe that, you shouldn't have been buying that. Signing anything in regards to people promising you to give you stuff you don't deserve is not real. They use your ego against you, bro. Your inability to identify that your price tag had dropped put you in a position to allow that ego to be manipulated by people who ultimately were in their best interest for you to think that way about yourself. You see what I'm saying? It's in their best interest for you to believe that they were going to pay you something that no one else would so that they can ultimately do this. Now, granted, this is what comes of it. When you do something like that to James Harden, you know he's going to throw a fit. He protests everywhere he goes. Why would you do this to him? Didn't seem like the greatest vision for the Philadelphia 76ers to begin with. Just like I said on my channel yesterday, what are people dreaming about? Why do you want this? When, as I look at it on paper, what you see is the only outcome of what this was ultimately ever going to be. And so for me, I just look back and say, well, James Harden wants out of a basketball situation? A normal Monday morning. You know what I'm saying? And it's just, did he get duped if what the stories are told? Yes. He was told to opt in to something that he likely should have opted out of or opted out of something he was likely supposed to opt in. I don't remember. I think he was supposed to have a $35 million ex uh, expiring situation where he could opt into. I believe that's how that went. And if he did not opt into it, they could have restructured it in such a way for him to get more money or something of that nature. I believe that's how that went. But nevertheless, the point is, he should have never believed he was deserving of that money in the first place and nobody could have lied to him about giving it to him. That, my friends, is the type of self-awareness that is so very important and awareness of one's price tag is so important in the NBA, especially when you're a superstar trying to negotiate certain things for your future. The NBA is not inclined to give you a certain amount of money. And based on what they expect you to do later, I was listening to Gilbert Arenas talk about this, and I think... I think the way that he wants to look at it is not the way that it actually is structured. He wants us to look at it as the next contract is you paying me for what I've already done. I've done this, 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 and this, and now you're going to give me maximum money for the next several years to solidify that has been done. But what I'm telling you is that is not the way you want to structure your basketball team. It may be the righteous way to pay somebody for their services, but it's a horrible way to build a foundation for a basketball team. Because what you've already done, I'm going to have to pay you a significant amount of money for it. And it's not about what you've already done that I'm actually paying for. When it comes down to putting these basketball teams together. So that may be the righteous way for Gil to feel like he's getting what he deserves based on I did superstar stuff. Now it's time for me to get superstar pay. But that ain't how you structure the foundation of trying to make sure your team is any good. Because if I pay that dude what he's worth based on what he's already done, he's eating up a tent eating up for half of the cap space and the rest of the team is trash and he can't live up to that no more because he don't play like that no more. 
That's what he used to do. That ain't what he's doing now. And his a, a portion of the cap space is kicking our butt now based on him not playing that well and everybody else not being on the team because of it. He eating up all the money. We can't afford those guys. So it's like, nah, Gil, nah, nah, no. Nah. I'm paying you for what I think you're about to do, bro. And that price tag that you're capable of reaching in regards to these negotiations is what is a reflection of what you've already done. But if I don't think you can do that again, I'm not going to pay you that. It's not in my best interest to pay you that. Not if I'm the GM. And so it's like, nah, that players got to get it in their head right now. It may be in your mind fair for you to be paid for what you've already done, but once you start being responsible for putting together that basketball team, you can't do business that way. You cannot do business that way. And because you can't do business that way, from within the player's perspective, they got to know that. Bro, I can't pay you $60 million, you're 37 years old, and you're not going to play no more than 40 games going forward just because you've been a superstar for the last 10 years, fam. I got a team I'm trying to build here. I cannot do that. System don't allow it. So players need to learn from this. Don't get duped by people who are making promises to you. <laughs> to you. That don't even make sense to you if you're assessing yourself properly. Don't buy that. Don't, don't, don't let people sell you garbage, fam. Because it's in their best interest to sell you garbage. And the next thing I'm going to say is this. If a GM is doing his job correctly, you're getting lied to in a lot of cases. Because there's too many different interests, and an NBA owner's uh, uh, opinion can change any moment. <laughs> While I'm working on something, they can change their mind. And suddenly what I've promised to you is not possible if I want to keep my job. It's not my will that I'm influencing when I'm representing the owner. So if you're going to be mad at me for lying to you, you need to understand who's paying my bills and why that lie was ever necessary. The lie was necessary because I either choose to either lie to you and do their will as they keep changing their mind. Or I could be honest with you, act like I'm the owner and lose, our, lose my job. Daryl Morey is not representing himself. And most importantly, he wasn't representing himself when he was in Houston either. So when you look at him and say, Daryl, why do you don't have the power? You need to look at the person above him and say, can you give Daryl the power so any, any, all of this can make sense to me? Because <laughs> that's, that's what you need to have happen. You need Daryl Morey to grab about $6 billion of his own money and buy the team. That way, his actions can reflect what he wants to do. Otherwise, he's just foregoing his job to keep you happy. And my friend, he doesn't keep his job if he does that. So James Harden's whole position on this situation looks a little immature based on what I'm seeing. Granted, there are some people who may have lied to him, but this is a business, fam. And like I said, if I'm not doing my own bidding, then it may be the in the job description to tell you some things that benefit the team that may not necessarily be the truth. Your gripe is with the people who are telling me to do that to you. Don't go up on stage and bash me like I got some type of power. I ain't got no power, fam. I got a job, and if I'm going to keep it, I better do what I'm told. So I just think James Harden's whole position on this is childish. I really do. I think it's childish, man. The man on the damn team? If that man told you that he was going to do something two years ago, and then his boss told him he couldn't do it this year, guess what? It wasn't his will in the first damn place. And it may have been the boss's idea to tell you that damn lie. He doesn't represent himself. He represents the job. So that's my position on Daryl Morey. I don't think he should be blamed for, for the lies. He didn't tell them. He was told to tell them. They didn't come from his mind. So that's, that's where I'm at, man. The Philadelphia 76ers organization has been doing funny stuff with their players, man. I told y'all with this Ben Simmons stuff. I told y'all. I told y'all. They have more of an interest on winning the battle between themselves and the players, just like the Nets. It's a Joe Sy situation all over again. They're more interested in bug breaking than they are in building a proper basketball team. I'm sorry. It just shows, fam. It shows how you treat the players. Ben Simmons, that situation, y'all shouldn't have been trying to hold on to that boy. He couldn't hit a jump shot. He was, a scared, he was afraid to shoot the ball. Afraid. Phobia. Mental health. Y'all didn't see that before he opened his mouth about his mental health? Afraid to shoot the ball as a basketball player. 
the very definition of something wrong with someone's brain. So, like, for me, it's like, he didn't have to tell me he had mental health problems. I was disappointed in the world for not believing him for having, for saying he had mental health problems. He didn't have to say it. The guy was afraid. Shoot. So, for me, it's like, yo, all of this is just, like, out-of-touch people who have no sense in regards to assessing people's mental health, trying their very best to inflict their will upon people who are unwilling to begin with. Ben Simmons was unwilling, James Harden was unwilling, and you knew that when you brought him to the situation. Having dealt with Ben Simmons, why would you request or dream up the idea of bringing James Harden to you? And you had just dealt with Ben Simmons, you had just dealt with Jimmy Butler. And your solution is to bring yourself yet another person who could potentially be upset based on the way that we do things here? What are we signing up for? Y'all better hope Joel Embiid don't follow me, man. And that's all I got to say. Y'all better hope he don't follow BDF44. Because if he's been following me for the last couple years, he's starting to understand the reason behind why it's now time to start thinking about getting the hell out of Philadelphia before the season starts altogether. You're not going to move this guy. You better move me. Don't have us on the hook with this dude for another wasted Ben Simmons-like season where somebody's sitting on our bench, 35 plus million dollars of cap space, not playing basketball, not being injured. And you want me to go out there and lug at seven feet tall, 300 pounds, play MVP for you again, only for it to go out in the second round again. I'm not doing it if I'm him and I'm telling him, don't do it. Get the hell out of there for your knee bust out and you end up out of this league trying to drag a team that doesn't even have the interest of winning as a forefront. Get out of there. Get out of there. Shouldn't be nobody left but Tyrese Maxey in Philadelphia when this crap is over. <laughs> I'm sorry, Philly fans. It's enough is enough, man. Enough is enough. I'm not saying James Harden didn't come to Philly and then proceed to give you the James Harden experience. It's what he does. But it's your owner's fault for dreaming this crap up in the beginning. Hiring Daryl Morey with the intention of getting James Harden. This is what you dreamt of. This is what you asked for. This is exactly what it looked like was going to happen. That's exactly what it looked like was going to happen. When he left Brooklyn, came to Philadelphia, I could assure you, I could assure you he wasn't going to be the same James Harden he was from Houston. And that's exactly what they were bringing him for. He had already proven himself time and time again to have issues in the playoffs. Issues with durability. Issues with all kinds of stuff. And you're bringing him to be Joel Embiid's second. That just... Uh... And promised to pay him all kinds of money that you knew damn well you didn't want to pay him. That you knew damn well last year he wasn't due. He wasn't due to make that for what you were promising him. Then. This is a, it was a terrible vision that did not have championship ceiling attached to the end of it. What it likely had was this scenario attached to the end of it. telling y'all man there's certain teams in the eastern conference i'm sorry i'm sorry some in the western conference but the ones in the east are the ones that come to mind y'all priorities appear to me to be more so about controlling the minds of your subordinates people players making it so that everybody in the future knows not to mess with you but what you don't understand is by holding that position you mess with yourself because now I don't want to go to your team I don't want to go to your team because your vision's bad I don't want to go to your team because you're going to lie to me about what it is you think I'm worth I don't want to go to your team because you don't see the foresight in and the wisdom in simply not doing so based on the drama that can come later on it's just bad from what I understand Tobias Harris has been complaining about his minutes and playing time I had heard that tea leaf a couple times, but I don't think I mentioned it on this channel. It is now in the forefront of my mind. He, too, wants the hell out of there. Has an expiring contract. Probably very movable. Maybe it's time to turn our attention to trading him, Daryl. Maybe that's the move. Because <laughs> if he's disgruntled and he has that much of the cap space that he's eating, maybe if you trade him, he can create some flexibility to make change the dynamic of the team to make it more desirable for the pieces who are left behind. James Harden got to be there. Maybe if you move Tobias Harris for the right package, it can make the team a little better. Team a little attractive. More attractive. I don't know, but this is the move. Since he's unhappy, likely ain't going to resign with you. 
on a very, very expensive contract that should likely be able to be moved, it's time to move it. You know, it's time to move it. <clears throat> now, if I thought Tobias Harris was happy in Philly and I had intentions of re-signing him at a price that I appreciated next summer, I would be less likely to keep him. But since he's obviously unhappy here, the likelihood of him re-signing with me is slim to none. So I need to un incorporate that into my thinking and move accordingly. <clears throat> so these are the things that I'm thinking about with Philly. And, uh, you know, as far as James Harden's concerned, he ain't going nowhere. Bro, you can't do stuff like this and expect anybody to want you on the other side of the negotiation table, fam. And you certainly can't expect to do stuff like this and then expect Daryl Morey to receive a low ball trade offer for you and pull the trigger on it. Think about it. So that's where I'm at with that. I just think people are, are doing things for entertainment purposes because any other reason looking at it from behind the scenes, it looks like the wrong move. And it looks like there would be a lot of people around him telling him it's the wrong move and not to do it. Not because of any other reason than the fact that it's going to have the opposite result of what it is he's asking for. No different than everything else James is aiming for, it seems, in this league. So that's what I got to say, man. People got to blame themselves for this. People got to blame themselves. Self-awareness in the NBA is so important. If you don't know what you're worth, people can lie to you about that worth and send you up the wazoo, man. Don't be overinflated in your mind about what you are. Don't let people think that they're paying you for what you've done. None of that bull crap. None of that's real, man. Those are lies that you can buy into that will play into the scenarios that ultimately undo your your career. They're paying you for what you're capable of doing next. All you're doing is locking in that price by doing all that good that you did before. That's all you're doing is locking in the price. If you can't keep playing like that, that price should likely be void if they're doing what they're supposed to. It's just how the NBA's set up. Get out your feelings about it, players. You have to. Because if you don't, those same feelings are going to leave you without what it is you deserve, what you're supposed to be getting. And that's just what it is. My name is BDL44. I thank you all for watching. I'm out.